Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update for February 25th, 2025. A lot to get through in today's forecast update with near severe tropical cyclone Alfred raging in the Coral Sea at this time. It is now a relatively concerning situation in terms of its track forecast towards Queensland. We've got tropical cyclone Bianca over in the West Australian waters as well, which is a severe tropical cyclone at this time. And we'll be talking about the long range rainfall forecast and cyclone forecast over in Queensland as well. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning over here with Tropical Cyclone Alfred, which you can see here on the IR satellite imagery is doing really well for itself. It's developing a solid eye wall at this time and is certainly on the cusp of becoming a severe tropical cyclone, organizing itself very nicely, some great convection firing up around the center. It is looking like all around a very healthy tropical cyclone at this time. And if you flick it over to a visible band of the satellite imagery, you can start to see there is a little bit of a curve kind of, or a little bit of a dot in the center of this system here. I'm going to really zoom in on this storm here and show you what I'm talking about. And that is apparently where the eye is about to develop here. That's where the eye will begin to form. So you can see it is now really organized in quite a symmetrical tropical cyclone, really doing quite well for itself. It's a small system, highly susceptible to its environment, but that means that because it's in a very good environment right now, it will be able to intensify a lot faster than usual. Really good outflow coming out from the tropical cyclone. If you draw back to yesterday and the day before's forecast update, so I was saying that wind shear might be a little bit high to, for the system right now, but it really seems like it's taking the most out of that and uh, developing some really good outflow bands at this time. Of course, it is developing a a little bit slower, especially in terms of its, in terms of its eye wall because of that. But at this time, Alfred, I cannot fault this system at all. Along the North Queensland coastline, wind speeds are averaging between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour. They're a little bit stronger out to sea. You can see some of these observations out here, Marion Reef and down towards Frederick Reef. And I believe there's Flinders Reef through here somewhere. No, Flinders Reef is up here. There are some good wind gusts uh, between 50 and 60 kilometers an hour. And in fact, a little bit stronger than that. So the winds certainly are starting to pick up right now to some of these reefs here. Along the coastline, Hamilton Island has been blowing about 40 5 k's uh, per hour out of the southeast for the last couple of days. It looks like that's set to continue as well, and if not, pick up a little bit more. A few showers also in the vicinity of the Queensland coastline as well. You can especially see them going into the Whit Sundays, and there have been some respectable rainfall accumulations there in the double digits, lower double digits, but still some good falls here and there, and I imagine those patchy showers will continue over the coming couple of days as well. Let's jump straight into the forecast right now, wasting no time and seeing what this system is going to be doing over the next couple of days. And I would just like to preface this by saying that beyond the 1st of March, the forecast is still really uncertain, but it is starting to become a little bit more clear at this time. And I'll do my best to break that down for you in the most detail that I can fit into a 20 minute long video. Let's take it through for the next couple of days. You can see Alfred's now begun that southerly turn. It's expected to head towards the south and slowly intensify over the coming couple of days. You can see that intensification taking place through tonight, especially in towards tomorrow as well, expected to reach peak intensity sometime tomorrow night into Thursday morning as a category three strength tropical cyclone. Forecast models have been suggesting in latest model runs that it might get up towards category Category 4 status, whilst that is a possibility at this time, it's not looking overly likely. If it does keep developing the way that it has been developing over the next 24 hours and it doesn't slow down at all, there is a chance it gets up towards Category 4 status, but this time I would not be betting the farm on it. It's not overly likely at this time, and to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much considering that this system is well out to sea right now and absolutely no threat to Queensland, not at least for the next couple of days. This system is going to continue head to head towards Queensland by around Saturday, and that's when the forecast does break down. We have forecast models with multiple different scenarios here, whether it's stalling in this uh, spot here just offshore from the Queensland coastline for a couple of days, and then getting taken ashore between uh, Bowen down towards Bundaberg, which is a complete, uh, which is a high possibility at this time. Uh, whether it's uh, a direct hit around the Rockhampton area, which is another scenario that the forecast models are playing out, or a skimming of the Queensland coastline and a recurving once it gets down towards Fraser Island. All forecast possibilities right now are equal, equally plausible. At this time, the Eastern Bluff is expecting the storm to kind of do that stalling motion here, head back out to and then bounce back up to the Queensland coastline here, eventually making landfall around the Rockhampton area or a very close pass to the Rockhampton area and then recurving as well right down towards the south. Now, this is a very higgledy piggledy track uh, that the Eastman Bear forecast model has this tropical cyclone taking, and it doesn't take into account the fact that it will be stalling for a couple of days, which means it's going to be a much weaker system. All of the upwelling of the cooler sea temperatures from the lower ocean uh, will be brought up by the waves around this system here, which means it will be dramatically weaker once it approaches the Queensland coastline in this situation, of course. And uh, to be honest, just with a really crazy track forecast that the Eastman Beth uh, has right now, which seems to be a bit of a mix between its ensembles taking it into Queensland and then the other ensembles taking it well away from the Queensland coastline, which are different forecasts that make up the actual forecast model. That's what an ensemble is. It is a very difficult forecast to believe here. I think the Eastman Beth is kind of missing it on this forecast, at least. The one forecast model that I do believe is uh, really hitting it is the GFS forecast model, and this is a very reliable forecast model and has proved itself time and time again. The GFS throughout next week, 
or this coming weekend actually is taking the storm uh, towards the Queensland coastline, very slow moving, and then on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday it seems to get its act together, and then makes a landfall on top of Mackay here as a very weak tropical cyclone by the looks of things, but interestingly enough, the GFS keeps this as a very weak tropical cyclone throughout the next couple of days, in fact, throughout the remainder of its life, and I'm not 100% sure why that is, considering there really won't be much in the way of this storm here as it approaches the Queensland coastline, minus a couple of uglier sea surface temperature uh, observations, especially once it gets closer towards the more southern uh, Queensland landfall at this time. But yeah, I don't really see a good reason why the cyclone would be so weak if it does make a landfall as far north as Mackay. But I do believe that the GFS track is going to end up playing out. And I'll get to my personal take and my personal forecast on this tropical cyclone in just a few moments. The axis is the one that's still calling for that recurve. And a recurve is where the tropical cyclone gets towards the Queensland coastline and then heads away from it at kind of the last minute. And you can see here by this weekend, Saturday and in towards Sunday, it's really approaching Fraser Island. And then at the last minute, it looks like it turns well away from Fraser Island. I've never been a fan of the Axis G3 forecast model, uh, just considering that it is uh, just a little bit on the higher side of in terms of intensity. I mean, this would be approaching Category 4 strength tropical cyclone status here in terms of the winds and the wind gusts. It'd be way too powerful uh, to be uh, kind of at this intensity down here just with the conditions that it will have available. So again, I'm not a follower of the Axis G3 forecast modeling, considering it is now completely different to what the major forecast models, the Eastman Bay for the GFS and also the Icon forecast model are now saying which are calling for that Queensland landfall I'm not really a follower of the access forecast model at this time, which is the forecast that the Bureau of Meteorology bases their forecasts off. That's a lot of forecasts in one sentence. So in short, in summary the forecast that I'm most favouring right now in terms of a proper forecast uh, curated by the forecast models is the GFS. It's this one here. We've got that very slow moving tropical cyclone offshore from the central Queensland coastline before a landfall somewhere between Bowen and Bundaberg. Right now the forecast is tipping towards Mackay, but I reckon it'll be a little bit further south than that, probably around Rockhampton or Gladstone area. And speaking of, let that, of that, let's just jump straight into my forecast right now. It's very similar to the GFS forecast model, I might uh, add that. You can see that I'm expecting the tropical, or not, uh, not that I've got a proper forecast, but I'm expecting the tropical cyclone to continue intensifying throughout the course of today. I'm really expecting it to get up towards Category 3 status by later on today. I would be surprised if it wasn't up at that uh, intensity later on today, especially considering it's doing a really good job at firing up more thunderstorms and convection right now. I'm expecting a steady track towards the south, if not the south-southeast, throughout the next couple of days before it turns around sometime around the 27th or the 28th of February, and then begins heading towards the Queensland coastline by around this point here, once it gets down towards the latitude of around Mackay. At this point, I'm expecting this tropical cyclone to really slow down in its forward motion. It's going to trickle itself closer towards the Queensland coastline, very, very slow moving indeed, and it'll probably be a final approach of about three or four days, and then as a weak tropical cyclone, Category 1 status at the most, making landfall around the Rockhampton or the Gladstone area area at this time. Now that's in line with some major forecast models, especially from yesterday. The latest trends are kind of suggesting a bit of a mix between a landfall around the Mackay area and a landfall around the Rockhampton area. So whether that's a northerly trend that's worth paying attention to at this time, I'm not 100% sure. My hot take on it is a weak tropical cyclone landfall somewhere between the 3rd and the 5th of March between Bowen down towards Bundaberg and most likely between Mackay and Rockhampton. That's my personal forecast on it. And in fact, I probably shouldn't even be calling it a forecast. I should be more calling it a hunch. It's a very, very difficult time to be a forecast over in the Coral Sea. There are so many moving parts of this tropical system at this time, and it is a very, very hard time to be saying exactly what is expected. Again, unfortunately, we're not going to know exactly what's expected on this tropical cyclone until probably at least tomorrow. And if not, in fact, dare I say, until this tropical cyclone stalls, we see exactly where it's going to go. There is a couple of general rules here because of the high pressure systems down in the Tasman Sea and the Great Australian Bight. There's a big high pressure belt there. Depending on how close this tropical cyclone gets to either high pressure system, I mean, if it gets itself to towards the New Zealand one uh, over here in the Tasman Sea. It will get dragged down on the northern side of that and then down towards the southern reaches of the Tasman Sea. But it looks like for the most part, if this high pressure system does strengthen up, which it should do this weekend, it looks like it's gonna drive this tropical cyclone over in towards Queensland with very little resistance from the one over in the Great Australian Bight, which would be weakening off at this time. So I do believe that with these high pressure systems, that really strong one expected in the Tasman Sea just outside of New Zealand and then the weakening of the high pressure system over in the Gulf of um, not the Gulf of Carpentaria, the Great Australian Bight on the opposite side of the country, I do believe that this tropical cyclone is going to ride around on the northern side of that and then get dragged into central Queensland somewhere around here and then looking really long range it'll go into central Queensland, its remnant energy will get dispersed across New South Wales Queensland and South Australia. That's what the uh, kind of the synoptic chart is telling me at this time. I reckon that that it will have room to change but it, it, generally speaking the synoptic charts are very very predictable and we know what's going to be happening up to two weeks out into the future these days with the advancements in forecasting 
technology. And just given the fact that we do have that high pressure belt right now, I do believe that that is what's going to happen. Let's take a look at impacts on the Queensland coastline now, especially rainfall. That's one that's really got my uh, eye. We'll be seeing some really significant rainfall accumulations around the centre of the storm when it does kind of go into that stall and is really slow moving. Hopefully by the time it gets closer towards Queensland, it will have a little bit more forward motion on it. If it doesn't, that's going to be a real concern in terms of rainfall. But I estimate along the uh, shores where the landfall will take place, we'll be seeing rainfall accumulations between two and 500 millimetres. If it landfalls a little bit further south down towards Bundaberg, up to about 600 millimetres is possible. Uh, and then widespread falls between 50 and 250 millimetres extending along the uh, central Queensland, the south central Queensland coastline, and even falls up to about 200 millimetres expected down on the Sunshine Coast and as far south as the southeastern corners of Queensland as well. Generally speaking, when you've got a tropical cyclone approaching the Queensland coastline somewhere around Rockhampton or Agnes Water, which isn't unheard of, but still very unlikely, you get a big flush of rainfall heading in towards the southeast of Queensland as well, and even in towards the northeast of New South Wales. So that's a part of the forecast that we'll pay close attention to in the next couple of days. But yet this time it's way too early to be making estimates on terms of impacts along the Queensland coastline. At this time I've gone through the forecast in a very shaky manner as well. If you've got any questions or comments on it, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. And just to recap on that, that weak tropical cycle in landfall seems to be the most likely plausible or and plausible scenario somewhere between Monday the 3rd of uh, March out towards Thursday the 6th of March, somewhere between Bowen down towards Bundaberg. And my hot take on it is a Category 1 landfall on Rockhampton, a very slow moving tropical cycling up towards landfall, which obviously means that it's going to be wetter than not, or wetter than it should be if it wasn't as fast moving. So again, we do have some impacts that we need to iron out over the next couple of days. For Queensland though, absolutely no need to panic as a result of this tropical cyclone. No need to fret, no need to start preparing for it, no need to panic by, no need to evacuate. You're just going to hinder yourself when there is an actual impact that's expected to come through. Just enjoy the next couple of days. Watch this forecast very closely and make sure you are staying informed. I'll let you know when it's time to prepare and time to adequately get yourself ready for this tropical cyclone. And you'll have at least four days, probably up to about five or six days notice for this tropical cyclone to get yourself adequately prepared. Not only that is expected to be a very weak tropical cyclone. So even if it's your first tropical cyclone impact here in central Queensland, it is not going to be significant. It's probably going to really reduce your expectations for tropical cyclones, especially if it does make that landfall a little bit further south. Anyways, that is a lot of talk. I can feel my mouth getting very dry on this Coral Sea cyclone situation. Tropical cyclone alpha nearing severe tropical cyclone status. Let's turn it back a little bit and head over towards Western Australia where we've got tropical cyclone Bianca currently raging well offshore from WA here. It's a strong tropical cyclone category three status as well. In fact, it is stronger than tropical cyclone Alfred at this time. And dare I say that this is about to get upgraded to category four status. This is a very strong tropical cyclone over here. I called it, I knew it was gonna get us uh, up towards strong tropical cyclone status. It just didn't look like it was going to considering it really took its time to develop. And if you take a look at the last six hours of its development, it has came leaps and bounds it's really, really squeezing out that eye right now. It looks like it's got another 12 hours to properly intensify before those sea temperatures begin to drop off a cliff. But at this time here, Tropical Cyclone Bianca has made the absolute most of its current situation. And I'm very, very happy to see such a strong tropical cyclone as well. I mean, it's well out to sea offshore from Western Australia. Interesting stuff. And yeah, it is a powerful tropical cyclone, really doing quite well for itself. Category 4 status looks imminent to be upgraded to, at least for this tropical cyclone here. It is really, really doing well for itself. And I cannot be stressing that enough. A very interesting interesting tropical cyclone that's for sure and it's very likely that it's not going for Western Australia. In terms of the forecast for this system, like I've said over the last couple of days, it, we know that Western Australia is not going to get impacted by it in pretty much any way whatsoever. You can see tomorrow afternoon it's, it's expected to really slow down and weaken off in its forward motion and then it's going to be pulled back towards the uh, west by the looks of things, even a bit towards the northwest and get dragged away from the WA coastline. In terms of rainfall, a few showers are possible tomorrow across the southwest corner of WA. In fact, you can see four-day rainfall accumulations across the southwest corners of Western Australia, a couple of drops of rainfall here and there, but compared to the 100 millimetres that we were looking at a couple of weeks ago, it is quite a sad sight to be so dry down across the southwest corner of Western Australia. It depends on what showers come through, but it certainly looks like a couple of drops that are possible here and there across the southwest capes tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon. For the Perth metro area, I would not get your hopes up for any significant rainfall at all. Uh, if it does rain, it'll be a spit, it'll be a trickle, and it really won't be much at all. So again, don't get your hopes up for any significant kinds of rainfall. Even though severe tropical cycling Bianca is a significant tropical cyclone well offshore from the WA coastline, it is not going to be a significant impact and it's very, very lucky and very thankful that it isn't going to go for the West Australian coastline because that would be a disaster, that's for sure, in the wake of tropical cyclone Zelia. This system is of similar intensity to that, that is for sure. So again, it is really, really fortunate that it isn't going to go for the West Australian coastline. A couple of clouds, a couple of showers here and there, and that is basically it for the southwest corner of WA. In terms of other interesting aspects of the weather forecast, we're very lucky that it's only Bianca and uh, Alfred across uh, the cyclone world because 
there really isn't much uh, else to talk about around the Australian weather scene. So it's lucky that we don't have major floods going across in far north Queensland and another tropical cyclone going for Western Australia. That'd really keep our hands tied. But at this time, it looks like it is a little bit quieter as tropical cyclone Alfred rages on in the Coral Sea. Significant rainfall accumulations. I'm not really seeing any patches along the 14-day forecast. It looks like it will heat up, especially across the west into the first week of March. By the looks of things, it will be a relatively cool end to the summer season, unless you live across in Australia's red centre, of course, and it's going to be the stock standard 40 to 45 degree days. But in terms of uh, the temperatures, it doesn't look like it's going to be too hot to round out February at this time. A couple of warmer days here and there expected across New South Wales and Victoria, but bar that, really nothing in the way of significant heat. First week of March, it looks like it'll heat up across the southwest corner of WA, especially across Western Australia, just in general, and then in towards South Australia, come around the 5th of March, it'll be much warmer across interior parts there. Sejuna and Pooper Pedy looking at tops into the mid-40s there. Adelaide as well, a top into the 40-degree threshold is expected come Tuesday, the 4th of March, and then later on to the forecast period, it looks like some warmer weather might get dragged across in towards New South Wales and Victoria, and as this tropical cyclone moves in towards or towards Queensland, it looks like that warmer weather will get dragged along it well with it as well, or dragged inland with it, and those warm temperatures will return again across interior parts of Queensland with very humid days also expected as this tropical cyclone moves through. But yeah, in terms of significant heat and significant rainfall, it's nothing out of the ordinary, nothing crazily out of the ordinary. And whilst there will be some hot days here and there, it doesn't look like there's anything really worth going into great detail about over the next couple of days. So that is a little bit disappointing indeed. The long range rainfall forecast is now beginning to become a little bit more interesting, especially as we see that the immediate forecast is now heading out towards early March at this time. So it's starting to get quite exciting indeed. And you can see again, 14 day rainfall accumulations across parts of Micronesia, Fiji, Vanuatu, looking quite wet indeed. And of course, if we take out of the uh, account the fact that there are plenty of tropical cyclones and balls of tropical moisture occurring there right now, and just take a look at the rainfall accumulations for the first two weeks of March in general, you can see still some good rainfall accumulations expected there. And it looks like a return to the Madden Julian oscillation and a return to the high energy periods that we've been uh, pretty used to across northern Australia throughout the last couple of months will pipe up again sometime around mid to late March, most likely around the 25th at this time. It looks like the rainfall will pipe up again across North Queensland around the 25th of March. So a couple more or about a month more to wait across there. Uh, but mark my words, when it does return, it will be quite heavy. That's for sure. Plenty of more rainfall is expected. It will likely tip the scales towards one of the wettest wet seasons on record up there, especially for locations between Cairns down towards Townsville inclusive, which have already had that very wet start to the wet season and more rainfall expected down there will certainly tip the scales in favour of that being a wetter than usual wet season. That's for sure. And even in towards the northeast of New South Wales and parts of southeastern Queensland as well, I would just like to say that these are certainly looking like hot spots now for some significant falls as we get in towards March, April, and especially in towards early May. I do expect some good rainfall accumulations here uh, between kind of the end of March and across towards the first couple of days of May. And I wouldn't be surprised if rainfall was substantially above average across parts of New South Wales throughout the month of April. It certainly looks like the long range forecast and other forecast models are suggesting that it is going to get quite wet quite quickly across those areas of New South Wales and Queensland. But yeah, on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Of course, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run the show without them. And their support is much appreciated. I hope I've answered everybody's questions on Tropical Cyclone Alpha. There'll be a detailed forecast update on it tonight as well, of course. I'll be going into great detail about the ifs and outs, and, uh, well, the ins and outs of this tropical cyclone as it approaches the Queensland coastline. And hopefully a little bit more detail will be out there in terms of what we can expect for a Queensland impact. But that is all for me today. A special shout out again to the channel sponsors and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.